In our third and final video lecture on linear demand functions, we're going to talk about factors that, that can cause a change in the B variable in a linear demand equation. The B variable being the price coefficient, which tells us how much the quantity demanded will change in response to a change in price. Notice, first of all, that the B variable always has a negative sign in front of it. This means that there's always going to be an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. As the price of a good rises, consumers will demand a lower quantity, and vice versa. As the price falls, the quantity demanded will increase. So what would happen to the demand curve if the B variable changed? First of all, let's look at the two demand curves we already have. First, we graphed our original demand curve of QD equals 800 minus 60P. This demand curve showed a slope of negative 60 and a Q-intercept of 800 pizzas. However, when the price of hamburgers fell, a close substitute for pizzas, not surprisingly, the demand for pizzas fell to QD equals 600 minus 60P. Notice that the entire demand curve shifted to the left. The Q-intercept became 600 instead of 800, but the slope remained the same. Consumers still bought 60 fewer pizzas for every $1 increase in the price. Therefore, the responsiveness of consumers did not change, even though the overall demand for pizzas changed. Next, we'll talk about what happens when the responsiveness of consumers to a change in price changes, how does this affect the demand equation, and how would it affect the demand curve? Let's assume that something changes besides the price of pizzas that affects not just the demand for pizzas, but also the responsiveness of pizza consumers to price changes. Let's assume, for example, that the number of alternative lunch spots in a city has decreased. Therefore, pizza consumers become less responsive to changes in the price of pizza. For example, hamburger shops have shut down, hot dog stands have shut down, uh, kebab and gyro stands have shut down. Therefore, all consumers really have left to choose from is pizzas. What we're describing basically is a decrease in the number of substitutes for pizza in a particular market. So with a decrease in the number of substitutes, it would not be surprising if pizza consumers become less responsive to price changes in pizza. So let's assume that the quantity demanded for pizza is now equal to 800 minus 30p. Notice that the B variable in our demand equation has decreased from negative 60 to negative 30. How will this affect the demand schedule for pizzas and the demand curve for pizzas? To determine the effect of the new demand equation on our demand schedule and demand curve, we'll simply plug in a few prices and see what happens to the quantity demanded using our new equation of 80, 800, I'm sorry, 800 minus 30p. At a price of zero, how much pizza is now demanded? Let's find out. QD now equals 800 minus 30 times the price of zero, which of course is 800. First thing we'll notice is that our Q intercept of 800, or the A variable, has not changed. But what happens as we increase the price from 0 to 2? Now the quantity demanded will be equal to 800 minus 30 times the price of $2. As we see, the new quantity demanded at a price of 2 is now 740 pizzas. As the price rises to 4, we see that the quantity demanded now equals 800 minus 30 times 4, which is 680 pizzas. We'll continue as the price increases and see how the quantity demanded changes. With our new demand equation, we see that as the price increases, the quantity continues to decrease. Therefore, the law of demand still applies. At higher prices, there is a lower quantity demanded, as we can see. However, what we should notice from previous demand schedules is that the final quantity demanded at a price of $10 is much higher than it was at our two previous demand schedules. At a price of 10, the quantity demanded is still 500 pizzas compared to much lower quantities in our previous demand schedules. Why is this? Quite simply, it's because consumers are now less responsive to the higher price of pizzas than they were before the number of hamburger, hot dog, and other restaurants decreased. The next thing we want to do is understand the effect that our new demand equation has on the demand curve for pizzas. As we see, the original quantity at a price of zero is still 800 pizzas. 
However, due to the newly unresponsive consumers of pizza, we now have a demand curve with a different slope from our original demand curve. Let's look at what happens when the price of pizza rises. At a price of $2, for example, the quantity demanded is now greater than it was in our original demand curve. It is now equal to 740 pizzas. So we have a point right here on our new demand curve. Since this is going to be a linear equation, we only need to plot two points. So let's do a point at a price of $10. At a price of $10, the quantity demanded for pizzas is now 500 pizzas, which means that our demand curve is now steeper than it would have been before the responsiveness of consumers changed. If we connect these two dots, we, knew that we now have a new linear demand curve with a much steeper slope, indicating that consumers are no longer as responsive as they were before the B variable in our demand equation changed from 60 to 30. Now, for every dollar increase in the price of pizzas, the quantity demanded falls by only three pizzas, and sorry, 30 pizzas instead of by 60 pizzas. This indicates that consumers are now less responsive to changes in the price of pizza. A change in the B variable in the demand equation changes the slope of demand and indicates that consumers are now more or less responsive to price changes. Of course, if our B variable had increased from, say, negative 60 to 90, that would have been evidence that consumers are now more responsive to price changes, indicating that for every $1 increase in price, the quantity would have fallen by 90 pizzas instead of only 60. Or if the price had decreased by $1, the quantity demanded would increase by 90 pizzas. That concludes our video lecture on linear demand functions. In this three-part series, we have gone over how to derive a demand curve using a demand equation. We have talked about how a change in a non-price determinant of demand will change the A variable and therefore shift the demand curve. And we have talked about how a change in the responsiveness of consumers to price changes will change the B variable and alter the slope of a demand curve.